Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to talk a little bit about paths and how you can use paths to animate your props and have them follow along uh, different paths. And then in part two we'll take a look at how you can use uh, paths to dictate your camera movement as well and get some really cool camera effects. So we're going to be using this uh, cool looking alien fighter that we have. This is from one of our developers, CG Pitbull. And you can find this in the marketplace. So let's get started on our path work. Now the first way I'm going to teach you uh, how to create a path is rather unconventional. This is new with iClone 6.03, and this is called Transform to Path. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a, couple, uh, create a couple of transform positions for my spaceship, and we're going to have we're going to create a path from those transform positions. So say for example I went to uh, you know frame 100, and I changed the transform position of my spaceship to somewhere around here, and I'm just going to create a couple of different transform positions. This one over here at 200 frames, and then at 300 frames, I'm just going to move over to here, and then we'll go to 400 frames, and we'll just move our uh, ship over here somewhere. So currently, what we have, the animation that we have, is going to look something like this. If I play back, you can see it'll slowly move along here to here, and it's moving in a very uh, linear fashion. Uh, you can see the uh, edges of the movements, the very sharp movements. They're not very curved at all. So if I press F3 and go into my timeline here, you can see that I have my alien fighter selected. And let's just close the constraints down for now. You can see we have these four transform keys. So position one, two, three, and four. Now, if I wanted to change this into a path, say for example, I wanted some uh, smoother movement, all I need to do is uh, click and uh, select all of these different path points, uh, hold the control key and select all of them right here. And let's get that last one right there. And then just right click, Oops, we need to make sure we right-click one of them, and then select Convert Position to Path. And that'll create a nice uh, rounded path for me to go along. If I press, uh, if I just press Space and play back, you can see we're still going in that linear fashion, though, because our uh, alien fighter isn't connected to the path. It's still going along with the uh, transform keyframes. And if I select the alien fighter, you can see we have those transform keyframes. By the way, it's useful to have this kind of object-related track things selected, so anything you select will automatically appear up in the timeline. Just keep that in mind. And I'm just going to delete all these uh, transform keyframes because we no longer need them. We're going to be attaching our fighter to the path. So let's go to frame one right here, and with our alien fighter selected, I'm just going to press the P hotkey, and that's going to take us to the path section of the modify panel on the right. And then I can just go ahead and pick a path. So I'm going to select pick path, and you can pick any point along the path, like the second one here, for example. And that'll be position 22.4, uh, which means it's 22.4% of the way along the complete path. And I'm just going to switch this back down to zero because we're at frame one. We want to start from the beginning. And let's go to frame 400, which, which is what we were at before, uh, at the end of that uh, transform, and change the position to 100. There we go. So now we're at the very, edge, uh, very end of our path right there. So we're along the path. You can see this is our this is the result we're getting right here. We're always facing the same way, um, which is really not you know how a normal pilot might uh, fly. You'd probably want to follow along the path. So to do that, to follow along the path, we can just go up and select the follow path option right here. And currently we're following along the x-axis. It uh, switches to that by default, and that'll have us you know go go along sideways. Now this will be different with every prop that you have. Uh, make sure you keep that in mind. So you may want to experiment with different uh, axes. In this case, I know it's the negative y-axis. And now if I play back, you can see we will follow along the path. And this is how a normal pilot would probably fly. Now if you want, you can save your paths as well. You can go to uh, Props, and go to your Custom Folder and Path. And then you, uh, once you have your path selected, just press the plus key down here. And we can save this as uh, you know Tutorial Path right there. And uh, we're good to go. And then we can use that path again uh, whenever we want this path that took us 30 seconds to create. Uh, normally you'd want to have a more complicated path. Anyways, I just wanted to show you that you can save that. And there's also in your uh, props template, there's also path templates as well, which we'll talk more about in the camera section of this tutorial. Now, if we wanted to create an entire loop for this path right here, if we wanted that, it to loop back to uh, frame uh, the first position, we can do that as well by selecting the path, going to the very top and selecting close path. And then it creates a loop and now the 100% point is here, and it's the same point as the 0% point. So keep that in mind, they're one and the same. So if I play back, we're gonna go a little bit faster, and you know it's gonna return back to the original position because the zero and 100 are one and the same. 
in an infinite loop. And we can also project it to the train as well if we want, to, if we had like a land vehicle or something like that, and your precision as well. You can choose to have it in a linear fashion, which is, you know, more, uh, let's take off projected terrain right now. It's like we had with our transform keyframes earlier, but I'm just going to keep it at a smooth tangent type right there. So that's your basics for creating a path. Now let's, uh, I'm going to show you next how to link a couple of paths together. And that's a little bit more complicated. So let's go ahead and create another path. We're going to have the next path. We're going to have this um, alien fighter navigating through this ravine up here. So let's go get an overhead view and we'll have to zoom out quite a bit to get the entire thing in our scene here. And what I'm going to do is create another path. This is the second way you can create a path just by going create and create path. And then you can just set your first uh, path point to anywhere you want. So I'll put mine over here and then we'll go, you know, through this ravine. Let's try and get these points as accurately as possible. It's going to be difficult to uh, navigate, especially with the lighting. We should have probably adjusted the lighting, but we're going to fix the uh, path points later. We're going to be adjusting them a little bit later on anyways. So let's just go to about there. And you can press escape when you're done and that creates your path. So now we have this path right here. And I can maybe just raise that path up a little bit since it seems a little bit close to the ground. I think we'll go to about there. So now what I want to do is I want to link this um, alien spacecraft to the second path uh, as it's going along this path right here, along the first path. Now to do that, I'm going to actually select my second path. And I'm going to change the name just to keep things a little bit clear here. So we'll go to, we'll call it Ravine Path. And so with our Ravine Path, Selected. What I'm going to do is just go to uh, a little bit further along the timeline. And we'll have to use the Alt and Shift keys to zoom in really fast here. And let's go through the timeline. Maybe to about here is where we want to, you know, get off this path and transition to the second path over here. You can see the blue point over here. And you can see if we press the P hot key, we're currently at 63.7% of the way along the path. So let's just go ahead at this point and go pick path and pick our second path. Now this point here might be a little bit confusing to some of you, so I'm going to go through this. So I'm going to explain this uh, path transition part here. So right here, notice now that you'll see we're going from position zero to the position zero of the second one, and then we're going all the way back to position 100. And take a look over here on the top right. Notice that the path uh, name changes. So here we're at uh, the first path, and the position is still zero, and then we're switching to a ravine path right here, and then we have that position change to 100. So that's kind of weird. And the reason for that, and we switch back to path. And the reason for that, let's go into the timeline to find out. So I'm going to press F3, go into my timeline, and let's open up our constraint track right here, which contains our path. And you can see we have the path one right here. And we have our path points along here. So we'll move our timeline down. And you'll notice that this point right here from frame 100 to like 250 something, that's all the first path. And then from this point here, we're suddenly on the ravine path, and then we're back at the regular path. And that's because basically halfway through our first path, we kind of cut in there and attach it to a different path. But we still have that keyframe from the first path as well. So this 100% keyframe from the second path, or from the first path rather. So all I need to do is take this one keyframe here and delete it. And we will no longer go back to that position. But we have this problem here where we go along here to the very first position of the second path. From the first position of the first path to the first position of the second path. That's because we don't have any position changes. So maybe about, I think, here we can go ahead with when we still have this path, when we're still attached to this path, and change our position to something like, I think, 65 will do. And then from here to here, we'll have a transition from this point to the first point of the second path. So now you can see we go along here and it just transitions. We can maybe even change that to something a little bit earlier. I think uh, um, this point right here, we'll change it to, I think, uh, 62. I think that was what it was at. We can have a, a straighter transition. So whoop, I think that looks a little bit better right around the corner to the first point of the second path. And then we can go down to frame like 800 or something on this ravine path and change it to position 100. So then our spaceship will be gone through the entire path of the ravine. And in addition, if you wanted to change the sort of transition between these two keyframes as well, uh, between these two keyframes on the timeline, let's hold the Alt key and uh, scroll our mouse button to zoom in really quick here. And uh, where are we? Oh, we're at frame 800 there. Whoops. Let's go back to this frame right here. So between these two frames right here, you can see right now if I play back, 
that's going to be our transition. It's going to come around the corner and zoop, just go back to that first position. So what I want to do is at the second, uh, rather the first point of the second path, the ravine path, I want to right click that and select transition curve. And we're going to go custom for now. I'm going to show you a couple of the different transitions that you can use. So right now we have a fairly linear transition, you know, just from one point to the next. Now if I select this and the second keyframe and I choose something like uh, ease in, for example, notice that we'll have a more of an ease in um, movement right there. And then it'll start along the second path right there. We can also do the same thing and we can uh, change it to ease out. So let's select ease out instead. So in ease out, all the action is going to happen at the beginning of the transition. We're going to slowly ease out into the second keyframe. So you can see now we'll have the like that. And that's what any, you know, probably adept pilot would do if he's entering a ravine like that. He would probably, uh, you know, ease out like that. And, if, and we can also change the position of these keyframes as well. If we wanted the transition to be shorter, we can do that just by switching over here. And whoop, you can see it'll just it'll sh slingshot around that and then go to the next position right there. So whoop, right there and slingshot over there. I think that looks kind of cool. So I'm going to keep that one right there. Now notice that we also have these other keyframes here, these rectangular looking ones that are a little bit strange. And those are actually transition keyframes. Now to demonstrate that, I'm going to go back to frame one here. And you can see where we start off. Say for example, I took our very first uh, constraint keyframe on the path and I click and drag it all the way over here. You'll see we have this transition section that's between our transition keyframe and our first position keyframe. So take a look if I scrub through everything here, this is going to be the, the this is going to be dictated by our transform keyframe right here. So basically nothing's changing right here until we get to this point right here. And then we're slowly transitioning to that follow path right there. We're in the same position. You know, if I went over here and I changed this to something higher, it would stay in this position up until, you know, here. And then it would slowly, slowly get descend into that position, into our starting position and zoom, zoom off like that. It'll be a lot faster um, because you know, we've moved up this initial start keyframe as well. So we can maybe, you know, take that a little bit further back and take our transition all the way back to the beginning. And then we'll have something like this. We'll zoom around that edge and then, you know, slingshot into that ravine. So the last part of this tutorial, this part one of this tutorial I'm going to talk about is how to edit your path points. So we're going to go to our uh, ravine path here and we're going to make our, uh, our alien spacecraft do a barrel roll. And the way we can do that is we can select each path. Uh, we can select the path first of all, and then all you need to do is go to the very top of your modify panel and you'll have the edit path option. And you can see we can select edit path and we can select all the individual points here and use the E hotkey to rotate them. So I'm going to rotate this one to the right and then this one, you know, down to 180 degrees. Let's try and get that a bit more accurate. There we go. And this one right here, we can rotate this one to 90 degrees on the other side or 270 depends on which axis you're on and then this one will have a you know a straight or we'll have him you know curve a little bit to the left because he's going around a uh well he's turning left and this one can be straight maybe this one will have a little bit further to the right there we go and this one will do the same thing there we go all right, so we'll have them kind of, you know, turn right along this thing. You can also select each individual point, use a W hotkey to move it around as well. So, for example, at the end, if we wanted him to, you know, zoom out of the ravine, we can take all these points and move them up, something like that, and take our last point here and uh, move that up into infinity, to infinity and beyond, uh, and just take this, I think it's kind of a weird position. Anyways. The up uh, arrow on our on our key points right here is basically going to be the top of our prop that's following along the uh, path right here. So we'll have a little bit of a barrel roll along here. And you can also add and remove uh, key points as well along your along your path. If you select edit path and you have your look at my cursor right now, if I move over to the path, it'll change this type of cursor. And I can just right click and add a control point that way as well. Um, I probably don't want to do that right there. So I'll just press control. Uh, Z, or you can just delete it as well just by pressing the delete button and that'll delete the control points. So you can add or remove control points at will. So let's take a look before the next tutorial to make sure that we're not uh, crashing into any, uh, any of the sides of the ravine here. So I'm just going to scrub through my timeline here and we'll have the, you can see, oh, just barely missed that edge right there. And uh, we can actually just create a, a follow camera as well. If we go to create 
uh, add camera. And I'm just going to focus on my alien spacecraft there. Press the F hotkey. And we'll get a rear view of this alien spacecraft. Something like this. We can maybe rotate it a little bit. And then all I need to do is make sure my uh, camera is selected and link it to my spacecraft. So we'll just link to the spacecraft and then we can uh, play back. And sorry if you have motion sickness, this might make you a little bit, you know, iffy, but uh, then we'll go off into infinity and beyond. All right, so that's pretty cool. I think we're okay and we don't need to modify any of the control points. But for example, if I did want to do that, you know, say for example, right here, um, closer to the end, I wanted it to be a little bit different. I can just, you know, switch to my preview camera here and uh, find my fighter by selecting it and pressing the F hotkey. And it's just around this corner here. See, I wanted this curve to be a little bit, you know, more extreme. I can just make sure my path is selected, ravine path, and edit the path. Select this control point and, you know, rotate it and my spacecraft will rotate. And we can, you know, take the points. Now these these points are not keyframeable, so any any modifications you make will take place will persist throughout the entire project as well. So just keep that in mind. So that's pretty much it for this uh, part one of this tutorial. We have this spacecraft going through our ravine. And again, if we want to make to make this uh, a little bit faster, we can press F3, go into our timeline here, and uh, have our alien fighter selected. And this path right this point right here where the spacecraft is at the end of the ravine. What we can do is we can uh, press the P hotkey over here and go to our ravine. Currently it's 99.8. Let's just take that point and make it a little bit faster, something like uh, you know 725. And then our spacecraft should be going through a lot faster, like zoom, like that. It seems a little bit cooler. All right, so that's pretty much it for part one of this tutorial. Uh, like I mentioned, in part two, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, camera work, how you can attach your cameras to paths and create all sorts of different cool effects. So thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned for part two.